Hi, everyone, and welcome to unit uh, one, lesson six. And in this lesson, what we're going to learn, we're going to learn about the tool, how to use the simulator to run your application and test your applications, how to use, how to run it on a physical device, and how to use, perform some basic debugging using the breakpoints. In addition to that, we'll talk about some of the common uh, warnings and errors that you might face while developing and running your application. So let's get started. I'm going to open the application that we've been working with, which was first app, nothing in this application, just simply, if you remember, uh, we have uh, in here, we have uh, uh, a screen, an empty screen, right now it doesn't do anything uh, i have changed the background for of this screen and to do that you select it and you show the property inspector and then i just changed the background color i added some code so i'm going to remove delete this code so it looks like uh just you just uh how it looked like when you just first created the project okay so if we go back to here and to run your application, there's two ways to run their application. Either you run it in a simulator or you run it on an actual device. I'm gonna show you how we run it on a simulator first, and then I'll show you how to run it on a regular device, an actual device. So to do that, here you have the play, but you can select here the device that you want to run it on. Now, let me, this is showing because it's uh, it shouldn't be showing because I've used network. It's okay. I'll show you what that means in a minute. So you can select any of these devices. So if I want to select uh, iPhone 11, any of these simulators, now what happens when you click on play? The simulator oh, that you selected will actually appear and it's another application that is running, and this is the simulator. All right, the simulator, it should change the background in a minute, it's not finished running yet. Okay, so now it's done running. This simulator is nothing but like an iPhone. You can actually uh, interact with it, as if like you're interacting with the phone. So things like, like this, for example, you can say, click on the device, you can go to the home, click the home button, and now you can see all the apps that are installed in your, this is the, the device, the iPhone simulator, uh, iPhone 11, you have stories, you can change the settings of it, as if like you're dealing with the phone. There are things like you can, um, you can double click on your applications that you got them installed here. You can run them. So that's, this is another app that we have. Um, uh, but these are apps and you can delete them from the device. So you just keep tapping on it and then you can remove these apps, okay, from your simulator. So again, it's just like you're dealing with an actual phone. Now, other things that you can do, you can rotate it left, you can rotate it right, you can do a landscape, orientation landscape right, landscape down. This is important when you're actually testing your application and you allow different layouts in your, um, uh, in your app. All right, so I'm gonna change back to the, uh, back to the uh, orientation portrait. Um, there's also here you can deal with the, the input, the output, and then you can select the keyboard, whether you use the, key, the Mac keyboard or you use the keyboard, the, uh, the virtual keyboard in your simulator. All right. So that's how you run it in your simulator. And then you can stop this application by clicking on here. And then if you want to test it on another, another simulator, all you have to do is you just select different device run it again to make sure that it behave and look okay on different devices, all right? 
So now if I run it again, I'll just show you quickly, you will get a different simulator. You will get uh, a simulator that is, uh, uh, that is uh, iPhone 8. See here, it is in the background, iPhone 8. Again, now you interact with it as if you are on an iPhone 8. Okay, so now if I do, uh, if we do it differently, if we wanna run it on the actual device, what do we need to do if we run it on the actual device? Let me show you what we do if we wanna run it on an actual device. So first, the first thing you need to do, you need to have your, your, your USB cable or cable that you can plug your phone into your Mac. So what's going to happen here, you'll notice on top, if you select the simulator here, you will see my phone here. So that is my phone. Now, what happens here, it'll start building it on that phone. So if I compile it, which is hit command B, it will compile it that is going to go to your to my iPhone. All right. And then you might get uh, to enter the, uh, the permissions on your Mac. So I did that on the other screen. That's OK. So it, it built it OK. Now, if I want to run it, all I have to do is just simply run it here. But let me do some one thing first. Let me make sure that it is not installed in my iPhone to show you what the steps that you have to do in order to run it on your iPhone. OK. <clears throat> All right, so I deleted it from my iPhone to show you what's going to happen. Now, if I try to run it on my iPhone, you're going to get an error saying that it's not trusted or not the team is not verified. Okay, it says that this operation could not be completed, unable to launch it on your mobile device because it is not trusted. The code is invalid signature and it cannot be trusted. So what do we have to do? All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my iPhone and show you the steps that you'll have to do on your phone in order to run it, okay? All right, so now what I've done is I, I open my setting application and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the, uh, go to general, here's general. And then you go, this is, I'm using, I, I think it's, um, uh, let me check what iOS I have. I think the late, not the latest one because one just came out. Um, okay, so if you look what uh, I'm running 14.4 for the iOS, okay. So if you go to the, uh, if you go to the uh, device management, under general device management, and you will see that developer app is sitting here. Now, if I click on that, it says this is this app is waiting for you to verify it and trust it. So if I click on this and I say trust, now if I go back and then run the app from my Xcode. you'll see that it ran on my phone, no problem, okay? So that is how we do it on your virtual device. Okay, so if we go back to Xcode, and what if you want to set it up this phone so you can run it without, you can run your apps on your device without having the wire all the time? Once you plug in your device to your Mac, you can go to Windows. From there, you can go to um, uh, devices and simulators. And then you'll see this phone, my phone is here. And then you can say connect via network. As long as you are on the same network, then you can actually connect to it from now on using the wireless or Wi-Fi, all right? So that's how we do, uh, how we set it up 
uh, to uh, so we can run it on uh, over the network. All right, so now we know how to run it on a device, actual device. We know how to run it on a simulator. Now, what I want to show you next, I'm going to show you the different errors that you can have, different warnings. So we're going to go to our view controller. This is view controller. Of course, you will learn more about it later on. But this view controller is the class that associated with that screen that you saw on the main storyboard. So this is the main storyboard. This is the view controller. And this is the class associated with it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to define a few things here. I plug in my keyboard. We're done with the phone. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to say, for example, define a few things. So let's say let name equal Ali. And then if I don't use this variable, the compiler is going to say, OK, it's going to give me a warning. It says, wait a, you know, wait, wait a minute, you're defining a variable that you're not, you'd never use. So this step is, again, is a safe feature in the Swift language, saying that you're basically trying to minimize memory allocations in your phone for things that are not being used. All right. So how to solve this? The easiest way to do it, you can do is this. You say print, again, my name. And then that warning should disappear in a minute. All right. So that warning is gone. OK, so if I say decided to change my name and I said name equal again now Ali Farhat, now what's going to happen is going to give you an error instead of warning. And then that error talks about, you know, you can't assign, reassign the value of name because you defined it here as a constant let here and then constants cannot be changed. In most cases, in most cases, Xcode is excellent about this. It will give you uh, a recommendation how to fix the problem. So if you click on that and then you click on fix, it should fix the problem. So what happens? It changed that let to var. So those are warnings and syntax errors. Obviously, these are simple syntax errors, but they can get more complicated down the line, and then you'll find that out. Now, what you can do here as well, you could have runtime error. So let's say I define an array called names. Again, we will cover this in more details later on. <clears throat> this array, it's a list, has two, va two values in it. All right. And then what happens here, you could issue some commands that the compiler cannot catch and these are runtimes error so one of the commands in this is to remove an element from the array okay so i remove the element from an array it removed the first element which is remove first okay again tell me it's immutable so we need to change it to var so we can do that and then if i copy this again command command copy and then command v and I'm going to do it three times, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen when, when we do the application. So what happens is that you can run it now, and I'm going to select, I'm not going to run it on the phone. I'm going to run it on iPhone 11. And then if I run it, <clears throat> oh, by the way, this function that you'll see is called view did load. This function get executed the first time you run your application. So what's going to happen in our program, it will print these, print Ali in the, if you see the output here, so it printed Ali, that's that Ali here. And then I did this, but it crashed. I got a fatal error and you can see that is a fatal error. So this is a very good tool to find out what's happening inside your program. And it gave me the line that caused that problem. And it says here, cannot remove first element from an empty array. So how is it empty when we have values here? It's empty because 
This command first removed the first element. This command removed the second element. And now the array is empty. So if you look at names right now, it has zero value. So let's say I wanted to see what happens inside my program and I can't catch that so easily. So there is another way we let the, pro, the debugger help me identify or figure out the problems. So I will stop this program and I know there is a problem here. So what I'm going to do, I will add a breakpoint here. When you click on this, you can remove this breakpoint by drag and drag it, click on drag, drag and click on it and drag it somewhere else, or you can add a breakpoint. A breakpoint is it stops the execution of your application and it shows you what's happening inside your app in terms of memory, in terms of variables, all of that stuff. It's a great, great tool. And if you are going to be a programmer, you cannot live without this tool. So if I click on play here, now watch what's gonna happen. I said this one, this application is, this is the first thing happens in your, uh, in this method is the first thing that happens in the view controller. So it stopped where I have it right now. So here is the array in question, which is names. Now, if I look at the array, it has two elements now. Now, there are different things that you can do with the compiler. The things, the common one that I use a lot, the debugger, I'm sorry, is step over. So it take you to the next step. Step into, it's great if you have function and then you wanna get into a particular function. This, it would continue to the next continue execution of the program to the next breakpoint. If you don't have a breakpoint, it finished, it continue executing. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to step over the statement and see what happens. Here you have the console. So all the outputs will appear here. Here are the debug view where you can see what's happening inside, inside your programmer, inside your program. So if I click on next, notice what happened. After this line got executed, now the array has only one element. If I click step over again, now that array has no element. And this is what's gonna happen here. This is what caused the problem. Now I know what the problem is, it means I'm trying to remove something from an array that does not exist in the array, all right? So if I click on step over, your application is gonna crash. This is a runtime error and compiler cannot catch it or because they don't know what's in the mind of, uh, of the programmer. But um, uh, with the tool like this, it will help you figure out your problems. All right, that is it. This is what I wanted to cover regarding the, uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, testing your app on a simulator, testing it on a, a device, uh, the different errors that you might see and how to use the debugger to debug your application using breakpoints. We're done in this video and I'll see you in the next video.